Yo, what is up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out today's second AM podcast. We have so much to talk about today. I have some new faces with me, some old ones, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and start this podcast off. What's going on, guys? I'm Ian Renegade Brown, uh, now known as Aries. What's up, guys? Zachary Smalls, Smalley. What's up, guys? Hope everyone's having a great night. What's up, y'all? It's Jordan Swaby Johnson here. Dope. I'm super excited that these guys took time out of their day to go ahead and jump on this podcast and talk about the topics that we have today. Just to let you guys know, we're going to be hitting on a couple things. Um, first thing, first and foremost, rest in peace to Fizzer. Uh, we're going to talk about that and a great loss to the community. Second, we're going to talk about one of the uh, something else that got overshadowed was UMG Orlando being canceled. Uh, the unfortunate thing with that and the hurricane coming to Florida, you know, what everyone's thoughts are. And then we're going to talk about the big gap that's between the last event going into the next game, the complacency that players get, teams, and, you know, then we have that annual rush once the beta comes out, new teams forming and stuff. So we have a lot of good content to be talking about today. I'm super stoked about it. Um, but what is everyone's thoughts on you know, Fizzert passing away, you know, and at, I hope you guys like the little tribute we gave to him at the beginning of the video. It's just a big thing. I personally wasn't friends with him, but I knew of him. And obviously when you lose an icon in your community, it's always a big hit and touches everyone in some shape or form. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I woke up from sleeping and, uh, I saw the video from his girlfriend, and at first I, you know, I, I didn't, but I didn't really believe it. You know, I, I thought it, I thought it was some like sick joke, and I thought it was just, you know, Twitter stuff, you know. And I just saw everyone tweeting about it. And I, I just, I kept looking into it, and then, you know, it kind of hit me. It was pretty, it was really sad to be honest, and, uh, you know, it was a giant loss for the community. Um, a lot, a lot of. You know, a lot of the S and D stars we have today, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we'd have a lot, a lot of them, to be honest, without him. I still think there'd, there'd be a big S and D community, but I think he, he did inspire a lot of people to play. Um, I woke up, saw in my team chat that they posted it on there, and I really didn't believe it either. Um, and it just kind of sucked, honestly, because like, even though most of us don't really know him personally, he's part of our community. You know, he, he could have been any of us. And that's just kind of, you know, kind of gets to you. He was such an impact on the community, and you gone just like that. All the stuff he worked up to, gone just like that. It's, it's really, really surreal. I mean, um, I, mean, I woke up. First tweet that I seen was legal, and it was uh, something like no way or something like that. Then I seen a, a few other people tweeting out about, you know, no way that can't be happening or whatever. And I saw uh, his girl tweet out, I saw his girl's video. And I'm like, damn, that shit really happened. And, uh, you know, the way I view it is, like, when I started playing competitive, I didn't really know too many pros. I started playing competitive through 2K, actually, on GameBattles.com. And then I saw Call of Duty was there, and I started playing COD from there. And uh, one of the pros that I, you know... So I started following him and watching a lot of his streams. That trying to get better. He definitely helped me, you know, S and D wise, from his videos and stuff. So like to see him gone at such a young age so fast was just, you know, traumatizing kind of because like it just puts puts you in a perspective like anybody can go. Like tomorrow you might mm -hmm. not be here, or Smalls might not be here, or anybody that you care about or know could just be gone just like that. So the way I view it is, yeah, um, you got to stop, you know, with the hate and all the negative vibes, stuff like that, because if you go tomorrow or whatever, you don't want to be remembered as that dude that was just an asshole or a hateful person. You know, just spread about positive vibes because you never know when something like that can, you know, happen to you or somebody you care about. Heck yeah, I yeah, totally agree on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. 
I just feel like it was like one of those things, like the general consensus consensus across the community was like, no way. Like it was disbelief across everywhere. You know, everyone, no one believed that something like this was going to happen. And I totally agree with what Jay said. You know, you never know. Like that guy was the same exact age as me. He was 23 years old. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, I'm like, man, I'm so young. I cannot imagine like my life ending right now. I'm just like, ugh. And then for someone, you know, like Mm -hmm. everyone keeps saying, you know, a huge S&D star, someone that like changed the game, you know, person that one of the first people to stream and someone that everyone watched trying to steal strats from. Like he's just he's definitely an iconic person that will go down in like the Call of Duty history books for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I I thought I thought it was a tragic, you know, it's tragic that something like that is something that had to bring the community together on, you know, and, you know, it. It made it made it made some people just stop stop talking so much shit on on Twitter, and um, you know you you know you just don't want to hold grudges anymore. You know that's just something that like you you learn not to do, and something like this that that's a it's a learning lesson that you don't want to hold grudges to you know other people because you know next day they could be gone. Because you know I get I get mad at Jordan Johnson every single day, but you know I never. You know, I'd never wish for that to happen. And if 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 I did get mad that one time or one time, and you know he was gone one day, I'd just feel like you know shit. So it's just it's just something you don't want to do. And then I I found it sickening how people were talking about how how that report said, you know, it could be alcohol. possibility that alcohol was involved, and people took it as fact. That was sickening to me how people were just just. Saying that they're happy that he passed away, that that was one of the that really you know hit me. That really hit me hard. Someone pretty famous on YouTube about it, mm-hmm. and you know it just it just really hurt me that people are were actually saying that stuff. Yeah, and when and when his girlfriend even even said that alcohol wasn't involved in the in the crash at all. People are just tweeting at his girlfriend and just saying such fucked up shit. Like, I don't understand why. If you have internet access, you you just want to be an asshole all the time to everyone, no matter what. It's just, I don't know. It's just something about social media that's just cancer yeah, to this okay. world. I think for, like, the bigger like a bigger picture, like, what Small said in the beginning was, like, community together. Honestly. Like, for the bigger picture, people came together. There was the few percentage, like, you know, people that were just being assholes and dicks about the shit but the big picture is people came together thing is i feel like i hope not but i feel like you know a couple of months from now or whatever when iw's out it's just going to be the same as it was before fizz passed people are going to still you know be hateful toward each other going to bring each other down and stuff like that but i mean i hope that the community can stay as it is right now you know supportive and stuff like that because if it stays supportive you know, the AM community will be able to rise up even more than what they're doing now. I think that COD would just be more important is if we would just build each other up instead of tearing each other down, honestly. It's just everybody in this community just wants to discredit everyone, not give anyone any credit or anything, say it's connection or whatever, but I don't know. I think if people start giving each other credit and start, you know, uh, stop with the positive, uh, stop with the negative shit, it'll definitely help us. Yeah, I totally agree on that. It's, I mean, you know, it's, it's the same stuff that we hit on in the last, you know, the last podcast. Just talking about, like, the AM community as a whole and, like, the negativity, you know. It's sad that it took this person for that to do it. But, you know, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And, you know, him, his life being taken and it having this impact on people, you know, maybe that is the wake-up call that a lot of people needed, you know, to be like, man you know, let's stop acting like this and let's, you know, do our thing and work together, like, as a team. Just like we talked about, like, how other amateur communities and different professional games are a complete night and day from the Call of Duty amateur community. So, you know, hopefully it ends up working out in a positive from that. But, uh, like we said at the beginning, rest in peace to Fizz and also rest in peace to his best friend, uh, Marcellus. I'm going to have both the links to their GoFundMe accounts. Um, I actually think they reached both amounts, but just to be safe, you know, I'll put both the links in there because, you know, a death is not only emotional and like financial toll on families. So definitely be able to help them out if we can. <clears throat> but now to uh, talk about something on a little bit of a lighter note. 
but in a lot of controversy from a whole bunch of different people that I've seen on Twitter is the cancellation of UMG Orlando. You know, I just want to throw out there really quickly before, you know, we see what everyone else has to say. Like, I honestly, and I don't know, I've heard, you know, different stories that Orlando's been scheduled since, you know, before MLG Orlando happened and that, like, you know, UMG was going to do this a long time ago, but I just don't think that the planning and whoever made this event, you know, in Florida during hurricane season was thinking, you know, in advance. And I, I think it's like a huge financial, like cringe for a lot of pe- different types of people, you know, for people that had to save up a lot of money for plane tickets and didn't buy insurance and aren't going to get those plane tickets back, you know, took off time from work, things like that. So I'm really curious to see what everyone in here has to say about UMG Orlando getting canceled. Um, um, I think actually they're taking, they're putting basically they're putting the, the land online in the name of uh, Fizzert. It's a 10k. It's like first place eight thousand dollars and second place is two thousand, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean I know that um uh, that Jordan Ecker definitely let down because they were supposed to go. They were, they've been preparing for how long, guys? Couple, couple months right after Orlando, basically. Right after so Orlando, let's say about two Orlando. months. Yeah. Let's say about two months. I mean, yeah, that's gotta be, it's gotta be annoying, especially yeah, if you're preparing for so long. But I mean, it's not all bad. I'm sure you guys got your money back for everything, right? Um, I was actually the only person that got a refund flight. Um, yeah. everyone I mean, else got vouchers. Yeah, everyone else just got vouchers, but I was the only person. But, uh, I mean, it, it just it sucks because, like, you, people, teams have been preparing for it. But, like, what Zeus said, like, the, whoever planned this event for October in Orlando during holiday season, or not holiday, hurricane season was not the smartest in planning it. Um, they were smart for canceling the event because no one should travel during a hurricane, especially a hurricane, you know, of that nature because it's pretty bad over there. Um but as far as planning it, that was that wasn't the smartest idea they could have done, and it just sucks because, like I said, like people take off times like time of work, like a whole week or whatever, and they spent money on these plane tickets, and they did all that just for nothing, and uh, you know it just it just sucks financially, I guess you can say, and it's just kind of crushing for all the teams that had high hopes going into the event that won't be able to showcase, you know, the grind that they put into it. Um, the hurricane is like at a. Katrina level, right? Like, kind of like the yeah, same. It, it's bad. It's, it's it's pretty much just. I think it's worse. They said uh, worse. Yeah, yeah it's as big as Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. Did you hear about the the news? Uh, the news anchor. Or what, what was he like? He actually said like, if you are a part of this area, you will die. Your kids will die. Yeah. It was Free the reason. it was the governor of Florida. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, that's just still insane to say, especially on live television. Live. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He didn't even. Um, he said it. that was pretty bad. But, you know, yeah, we, we can definitely blame whoever planned it because that was absolutely stupid of them. Um, but going is definitely very, like, it's not good. You can easily die. It's it's not a good idea, idea to go. But, yeah, whoever planned it, that was so stupid of them. I don't know what their problem. They could easily move it to a different area. Like, I don't understand. They can go to mm-hmm. Dallas, which is the cheapest place that they usually host them. Mm-hmm. They can go to, they can try New York. New York is where everyone's been requesting, too. Yeah, and yeah, Nashville, where they want people want to Nashville as well. Nashville, like, they can do Denver. It's in the middle of the country. Yeah, yeah but There's it's not so as easy places. to move all that stuff though, because you got to think they, of like all the shit they have to take with them. You know what I mean? It's not just like, all right, hey, fuck it, fuck Orlando, let's go to Dallas now, because you know that's like to rent out that convention center, dude. That's probably like months and months and months in advance, because that thing's always rented out, like mm-hmm. constantly. I mean, I was born and raised in Dallas. The convention center is always being used, no matter how big it is. It's always being used by other people, and then you gotta think of all the stuff they have to move. All these people have to change their flights. All the UMG staff, the you know the casters, all that stuff, and they gotta pour mm-hmm. money, get insurance for you know what I mean. So, you know, I understand well, the, that just in the first place, the two events shouldn't have been back to back Orlando. Oh yeah, they, definitely. U- UMG, UMG, and MLG. That. And the one thing I was so most mad about, it wasn't the money, it wasn't any of that. It was just getting on every single day at 8 p.m. at the latest, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. the latest, 
I'm playing till at least 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. That you like, at least at least playing like five or five to six hours a night. Just just all gone to waste for two months straight. Well, Zach, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that. Just for the sole reason that you should probably just be doing it. Like my team, we weren't even planning on going to Orlando. Um, you know, we're we're just preparing for IW, which is you know we're just trying to build Kim and shit. I just I just think it's a completely different game, and teams are gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but you I mean you know you still have your team intact. You you still. You know, you're still working on towards a goal, which you know well, is fine. Well, it's, so it's, it's not different. All it's different with my team though, because all three of, the core three of me, Mike, and Jay have teamed together for since Advanced Warfare. So we we already have chemistry. That was not an issue with mm -hmm. our team. That's mm -hmm. that's why I'm not I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone. I'm just speaking on us. That's why we were upset. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Of course, I, it's upsetting. Like I understand the goal you and you had a goal too. Like you had your you had a had goal, a goal set for we Orlando, and now you don't get to like you know. It's kind of like working out for you know a fucking modeling competition, and then it gets done, and you're like, damn, I don't get to show my body off. Like y'all don't get to show your skills yeah. off at Orlando now. And I understand that. Like you get money comes and goes, but like you will never get the time back that you put in for that event. Like there's no way for you to get all those hours and like being tired and getting on each other arguments and shit. Like I totally understand yeah. where you're coming from. There's a there's a lot of things that a lot of things that I gave up to and like to scrim instead of, you know, go to places with my family and stuff like that. It's just mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, dude. Um <clears throat> I was gonna say uh shit I forgot. <laughs> Well, and something that like I that Zach just said that actually like sparked something that I want to know what you guys think about. So like going into like different games, because look how many like pros fall off and like different people emerge as video games happen. You know what I mean? Like you can look at like pros from like Call of Duty Four, like maybe young ones, and like some of them that like succeeded in the next game failed in the other, and then the next game came out and they were done. You know what I'm saying? Like people are good at Ghost weren't good at AW, and then there were Dawns at Black Ops 3. Like, so how do y'all think, like, is it's going to change from Black Ops 3 going into IW? Do you think there's going to be a lot of, like, uh, do you think the skill gap's going to change? Because in my yeah. opinion, this game, like, the skill gap with Black Ops 3 is minimal. You know what I, I mean? I, I, think, I, I think, disagree I think with that. I think, I think, uh, I think uh, it'll be pretty similar. I've watched a lot of it, and it seems pretty similar. Seems like a pretty similar movement system, a little bit toned down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think it'll be that drastic of a change, to be honest. Like it was from yeah. Ghost to AW. Yeah. You know, I have to um, say, to be honest, that every single game, it's not it's not certain oh, players that God. fall off. It's um, it's just people who cannot like they can't adapt. Like the best players. They are they are good through every single game. You see Crimson, he's good through every single game. Scump, mm -hmm. good through every single game. It's just all about the player, you know. It's yeah. all about the player. It's all about adapting. It's all about, you know, the new game. It's basically like Black Ops Three. Um, so playing Black yeah. Ops Three, it's it's not bad. It's not it's not bad to to get your team to, you know, get ready for the game because the beta actually comes out. What's the day? The the sixth, I believe. Yeah, next week on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. next week. And then you, you better know we're going to be grinding that shit, but. Yeah, like I said, it's it's all about the player, dude. It's all in their minds. They have to they have to adapt. They have to do it. It's all up to them. You know, for the past two three years of COD, this has been you know pretty big change, like from Ghost to AW and then AW to this. You know, with thrusting and jetpacking, it's just been big changes from there. And with the specialists and the brand protecting, what I mean, what Renegade said, he's right. If you can't adapt to the whole to the system of the game to you know the changes of the game, we're not going to be as good as you were in the previous game. And people. That aren't as good as the previous game, you know, they can adapt. Are the first ones to say, uh, "Black Ops 3 sucks." You know, it's all connection based or blah 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 blah. They're the first ones to say that because they just can't adapt. And when, uh, from what I've seen about IW coming out, you know, it's pretty much the same. It's kind of the same, you know, movement system, a little bit toned down, like Small said. But then they have like a different thing with the specialists and stuff like that. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but you, you can like have like a specialist and like a trait with the specialist, something mm -hmm. like that. Oh, uh, really? And, I haven't uh, seen that. Like, yeah, explain you, that real quick for yeah, me. Yeah, you, you can like have you can have like one specialist throughout the game or whatever, and then with that specialist, you got like a side thing with it or whatever that you can activate as well. So basically, you can like switch between specialists during the game. You know, it's uh, something like that. Not exactly like it, but it's something like that. Um. Not too sure they're gonna have the band protecting it or not, but 
it's just it's just all about adapting to it. I mean, in my opinion, mm-hmm. the game that took, you know, the less kind of skill, I guess you can say, was AW, just because you know people were just ridiculous the whole thrusting and mm-hmm. golf and diving and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, as far it's just adapting really that's gonna determine how good a player is gonna be. In that game. I think I think all games take basically the same skills, just like I said, adapting. Like AW was very very like. Uh, kill heavy if you couldn't kill you weren't good at the game like you could have one person on the team who can kill and you win every you win games like it's the game was basically just kill whores everywhere um so i don't know i don't i don't know about the cod being taken least skill i think all of them took a lot of skill and that's why there's hardly any ams that have gone through the pro um circuit and shit and Mm -hmm. i just you know it's just all about adapting like i said well i think that also has like well, first off, I want to say, wasn't FaZe, like, the top team in Advanced Warfare? Uh, it was Optic in the beginning, then FaZe near the right. end. Well, didn't FaZe, like, win COD Champs last year? Uh, no, I don't... Wait, well, yeah, wait, it was Clayster, it was... Yeah, it was, uh, like, it was uh, Zuma, denial, Clayster... J-Cap, yeah. Denial, Denial, J-Cap, and then Replace. Oh, okay. Because I just, I like, I literally didn't watch... I haven't watched Ghost or AW, but I just remember, like, someone saying that, like, FaZe used to, like be the ones running that shit in the yeah, last Yeah, denial. Game, so. Yeah, that denial team it, like they kind of they kind of lost their drive after champs and they split off and uh, So they won champs denial, yeah, which was yeah, like denial. which was here. fucking phase minus Jcap. Uh No, 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 no. no. K- Jcap was in there. Yeah. Well, no, I'm yeah. saying, like, denial, like, who was denial? You said it was... Denial was Jcap replays. Mm-hmm. Attach. Um, attach. And Clacer. 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 Okay, so Zuma took J-Cap spot in Black Ops 3. Right? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. no, there's, um, a, there's Enable, too. Enable. Oh, Enable? Fuck. I thought yeah. Attach and fuck. See what I mean? That shows you how much I did not watch that shit at yeah. all. Yeah. Fucking... Did you know that uh, Jacob actually has been in the top two every single COD champs besides the first one? Yeah, he's only yeah he's won every COD champs he's been in except one of them and that because I remember seeing him and someone argue on it, Twitter. No, he didn't win Black Ops two. And yeah, Ghost. he didn't win Black Ops. He didn't win Black Ops two or Ghost. Um, he got second place. No, Ghost he got fifth. I remember because I was a fan oh really? Boy. Yeah, he was, I was a fanboy. Phase Red, it was him. Plastic replays and Proofy. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's crazy. Dude. I remember that. Optic got third place on the on the ghost one, right? Yeah. And everyone yeah. thought they sucked. And then seventh and seventh, which is <laughs> anyways, that's a whole new topic. Hey, do y'all That's another stop. story. Yeah, it is. Do you also I'm just like going off on like tangents. Do y'all think about what like kind of what Ian said, how he said it's hard for amateurs to make it and to like become pros. Cause like look how many teams, you know were amateur teams that were in the season one or season two. Do you think the that Activision is going to switch it up this coming year and, like, make it? Because I remember someone – I can't remember who said it. They Obviously, need, a they need to change the challenger division. But, That's yeah, the didn't they say that yeah. they were going to do that, that they were going to make, like, a yeah. quote-unquote challengers division? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I said that, last that podcast it never happened. Like, it never yeah. – they promised it and, like, oh, oh, uh, no, we're not doing it. Sorry. I didn't even know they promised it. That's – that's crazy. Yeah, they yeah, promised that, it. That, that's something they were hyping up. That's what our team was so excited for. Advanced Warfare. We we're, were really excited for that. Just, just having because like the way they kind of described it was like, like multiple amateur level leagues, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, nothing, nothing ever came about it. Yeah. And, I think and, and it would it would have just been fun, you know, at that because in AW we we never thought about. You know, actually going to major land events. Well, we thought about it, but we just never took initiative and done, did it. But we we would it would have been awesome seeing like just being in a league that you know you could trust because there's, there's a lot of Twitter leagues out there, but you you never know with like with those if if they're like legit or not. But um, like it would have been just nice playing a bunch of other amateurs in like an actual league and a sanctioned league and seeing how you stack up against them. Mm-hmm. We should do it like Halo, dude, because Halo has, you know, they have, like, their amateur leagues. Mostly every, like, CSGO has an AM league. Halo has an AM league. LOL has the AM league. And they should do it that, like, the last, because I think when they do relegation, and I think they kind of did it with Call of Duty this year, but I think it's, like, the bottom two teams in each division of the pro division, like, don't lose their spots, but they have to play to keep their spots. 
in like yep. each of the, the am divisions and i think that's how they should do it you know what i mean because it's kind of unfair that like hey you're a pro and you guys get so many more pro points than us that like y'all can just swap team members you know and like still stay yeah, in the it. seasons you know it's it's you know i sound like a little like oh it's not fair well life isn't but really it's not fair that you yeah. know the point difference is in fucking it's i'm never gonna catch up when you get ten thousand points for getting seventh place and i got 21st place and i only got 110 points it just doesn't make <laughs> yeah, sense they, so. they got like i think they got about 250 points for each win in a season yeah that's ridiculous and, you know and and we have 50 series to play and 500 series Bro, yeah and we're and paying then, and, then, and we're and then, paying 20 dollars pros, pros, pros are playing at pros are playing in the 500 series yeah dude it's and ridiculous so, so no matter what they're gonna have the host advantage <laughs> yeah it's not yeah, fair in the long run this is not fair yeah. like if they they need to put an am league like that's that's the most that's the best they can do just to help out you know an am league is needed in cod mm -hmm. if every other game you know esport game is doing it i don't I don't see why they can't just do it either uh, i don't see what the big issue is with it um it'll definitely boost the cod scene up a lot better like cause it'll be it's dope it's playing against people that you know and you know and then seeing the people that you know you know uh, make it you know in, in, in the am community but it's hard for them to make it when they don't get it they don't get a chance no i mean the challenger division would have been so useful because like you're playing against amateurs, they're, they're on your level, you know, and then you watch your you watch yourself, you know, grow and grow and grow, and see how you stack up against the really good teams, and really, it, it's basically like a, a head start. You get a head start on the game, you get really good at the game, you start playing really good teams all the time, you're learning new things, and it's just it's just a head start, and it would have been so easy for so much ends actually go pro this year, and that's just that was just such a letdown that they didn't do it because the next game they definitely need it. They really do need it because we need we need new faces in the yeah, process. I think, yeah, I think we would have seen a lot more players rise up. I mean, we had Mox come out of nowhere this season. Um, to be honest, I, I don't really know who else came out of nowhere. Yeah, I honestly he can't think of another well, pro. We had like Pristini Mox was and all known last year. Yeah, Mox was known last year. He actually placed T uh, twenty, I believe, with my friend, and then afterwards he started T28. playing. But it's, but was it T twenty eight? It's T twenty eight, but it's still like. Like not, it's not like he was like a a name a where pro, everyone knew, yeah. or like where like he was on like a on a oh, pro level sure. team. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel like if we had that challenger division. There'd be a lot of pros watching, and then you know seeing yep. people that they that they like, and you know there'd be a lot of people actually rising through the ranks. Dude, and it, it would give them, it would give them like yeah. so much of a like a you know th they can't say it wouldn't like cost too much money. Because so many people watch Call of Duty on Twitch. And then also, like, I don't know if you guys saw the pictures. Like, some of them were fabricated. But I saw one of the pictures that after Optic lost, what the stadium looked like. It was fucking ridiculous. Like, nobody oh, yeah. was there watching anymore. Like, if you, if there's so many more teams. You give, like, fans more teams to root for. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And it's just, like, it's it's the same people. It's FaZe, Optic, Envy. Yep. Everyone like, else, uh, you're like, who who's that? What team? Who? What team is he on? You know, yeah. like if the if they had that challenges division, it'll it'll lead to better storyline, I guess you can say. Yep. Like there's no really big storylines, like in COD, but like if a, if a challenger division were to be there, I feel like it would definitely lead, to and that'll give you know more people or people, like root for other teams and stuff like that. Just so it's not just an optic and a phase mm -hmm. that people care about. Yeah, like rivalries and stuff. It's always making the game more interesting. Like, yeah. uh, like Black Ops Two and and Ghosts. It was like really popular because, uh, basically because of Aches. Like he, he played the the bad guy, you know, of the community, and he just made it really interesting to watch. And just rivalries are so fun to watch because just you know, t both of them just want to destroy each other, and it just makes it all interesting, dude. And I think that we need a revival in this community. We need positive vibes, and yeah, like I said, storylines and shit. Just make it more interesting. Make more people watch it. Yep. Yeah. Now that we're talking about it, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna make a sick ass video telling MLG or Activision why we need a ham a challengers <laughs> division. And I'm like I know. We really do need it to like Jesus, I hope someone watches this and like actually like takes a little bit from it. You know, 'cause yep. that's like that's honestly the end goal is like I said a long time ago, is like to give amateurs a voice and like let us be heard. Eventually it's going to happen, you know. 
you're getting 300 views on the last video hopefully you get 800 views on this one and just on and on and on so eventually we're gonna be heard we're gonna have to be heard yeah so but moving on to the last one of the other things i wanted to talk about so what are you guys thinking about the big gap between our last event and going into you know the beta and then finally when the game comes out i i like to call it it's like a scramble in my opinion it's it's kind of funny to me because like Twitter is dead right now. You don't see a lot of people making a lot of team changes. But when the beta comes out and people, and I don't know if this is true, someone said this, but someone said that uh, custom games will be, like private matches will be enabled in the beta. Was it, was it on the last beta? For the Black Ops 3 beta? No. No. It wasn't, no. It wasn't. But so, and it was only one map. Like I think you could only play... Uh, yeah. Whatever map that was. I well, if custom know. games, yeah. nah, you could. You, there was like two or three maps. It was haunted and combine. It had combine. Combine, yeah, yeah. And uh, stronghold became a map as well. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. If custom games goes in there, um, I definitely want to see everyone scrimming. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't know how hard it was today and yesterday to even find anyone scrimming. Like, and when you find someone, it's just. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just it's so hard to find People, teams to scrum. I hate dude, the word I hate the most, like or not the word, but the phrase is when people say this game is dead. It doesn't matter anymore. No point. I'm, right? I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Do you think like in the NBA, like after they lose, yeah. they're just like, no, nah, fam, like we're just gonna wait till like preseason games and we'll start practicing. Like what, dude? These dudes, like you, if you want to be a pro in esports, like you're an athlete, you're a professional athlete. It's a year-round job. It's not a let me play before I can go to an event. Like no, dude, you gotta sharpen your skills at all times, dude. I don't care what you're doing. If you're bots, eights, scrimming, keep getting better every day because you're ne you're you're never too good. Mm -hmm. Nobody I is too good. I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah like. Man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you can go ahead, Ian. All right. Um, yeah. So, it's just it's like people think it's not a point because there's no event, but realistically, there's you and there's pros. Pros are way ahead of you. I mean, it might not be way ahead of you. You're just not known enough. But pros, you know, usually are way ahead of you skill wise. Um, what you're doing is you're playing every day. Day. You're you know get yourself up to their level, even though you're not yet trying to get yourself up to that level. And you're just trying to get better, and people just think there's no point in playing, and that's just false. Like, you can always make yourself get better. You can always put in more time than them because if you put in more time than them, and you reach their level, come next game, it'll just be that much easier for you, and you can just break through like that. Honestly, yeah. I mean, and uh, I, I still, I still think there's a lot of things to play for. I mean, personally, I'm, I'm going to a local, not with my, not with my actual team, of course. I'm going with a, with another team, but. And then, you know, there's the UMG ladder. I mean, it may be boring to play, but that's something to play. There's the GB ladder with a payout. That's boring to play. But, I mean, there's always something to play for. The game's not dead. There's still, a, you know, a lot of stuff to play for. The $2,500 ladder. And pros are going to be pros are gonna be buying the uh, mm -hmm. team, team slot. Some that are not buying, but some teams will be giving pros their their team to play on it. So, and the I 10K. Mean, yeah, 10K. There's still things, a lot of things to play for, and... You know, I mean, you know. I, I still know. think I still think teams could play even wagers. I mean, if if you don't want to scrim, at least play wagers. Mm -hmm. At least do something. But the, you don't want to just completely stop playing. That's one of the most idiotic things you could do. And to, I completely agree with that, dude. When uh, I mean, one of my best, you know, favorite moments since I was competing was last year, and when, and you know, there was no more events to play for. Bo3 was right around the corner. And my team, it was me, Smalls, Choop, and Bulky. We had did the DB playoffs. And, you know, we got, I think we placed fourth in that. And, yeah. like, that was probably one of my favorite moments in that. Because we played against pros. We took maps off of pros. You know, it was, it was a great yeah. experience. You we know? played and Epsilon. It, and... Yeah, Optic Nation as well. And, uh, you know, that just brought us together even more. It just built, it just brought our friendship together. Just getting that far together. Because we didn't think we were going to play that place that that good in that in that uh in that ladder not, not online at least we didn't have you know that kind of expectation but we did so like with the gap between bo3 and iw it's the same exact thing as the gap between aw and bo3 
you got to keep playing. If you stop playing and you have you just expect to pick up the sticks when IW comes out, you're not going to be as good. Your gun, your gunning is not going to be as sharp, and you're just going to lack. Like uh, my team is what we're trying to do. We're just going to keep the chemistry up. You know, keep the bond strong. We're going to grind these UMG, you know, playoffs out, and you know, just stick together. Because I see a lot of, you know, I'm not sure. I think I've been getting hit up by a few other people trying to get me to sketch or whatever. But uh, that's I feel that's stupid. Like, I'm not gonna just break up a bond in chemistry just to go to another team, but especially when I feel comfortable with this team. Like, uh, basically, you, you got to just keep grinding. Yeah, like, you, like you stop, agree, you're not gonna be as good. I agree with what you said before. Like, yeah, like playing, keep playing, dude. Like, um, people think that they can just quit mid game, or the, skip a whole game and then go to the next game. And it's gonna be all hunky dory. No, it's it's really not. It's really really difficult. And if you just let yourself basically deteriorate, like your shot's gonna be really cold. Your reaction time is gonna be weak as fuck. And you're just not gonna be at a level that you need to be at. You're gonna you, okay. You're good in this game. You go to the next game. You don't like it. You quit. You go to the very next game, and you think you're gonna be hot shit. When really you're just gonna keep getting shown that whole entire game until you can I don't know finally build up something. But look at it. It's at the end of that game. Now, you just wasted a whole year of your life. You wasted a whole year of your life to quit that game. So, basically, you just wasted two years of your life. And yeah. now you just have to pick the pick up the sticks again for the next game, which is, you know, you just got to keep going. Like, you can't quit. You just can't do yeah. it. About about the, about the you said talking about the shot, like, after after that stuff happened with UMG Orlando, I was, I was really upset and... You know, I, I just I couldn't even think about playing COD like for the for the time being. You know, just, I just needed a small break from it. So I just I was I played Counter Strike for a day or two, and you know, as everyone knows, it's it's a mouse and keyboard game. I, I was just playing playing the hell out of it. I got on COD today. I was getting gunned. I was getting gunned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, I was the same exact. <laughs> Destiny, it's okay, bro. I thought COD plays a UFG, bro. Oh my God! I'm like, yeah, I can't be, I can't be slacking on this no more. You know? Like, it's hard just to take, even when you take a, a day or two a break from playing so much, you take a couple of days off, and you pick up your sticks again. It's probably just as good as you were. You can't. It's hard. So, yeah, like, I, I, I don't understand how people can take how people are saying, hey, I'm not gonna play COD anymore until IW comes out. You're, you're oh, not gonna no. be as good. Yeah. And the thing, uh, you know, Guaranteed. some of my team. Some of my, uh, like, our group of friends talk about is just when, like, retired pros come back and they, they get full funding and, like, after they've been done for a year or two and they they just, just because they're a big name, they get, uh, like, just funding like that. That's just ridiculous to me. I, I, I know that's kind of, like, lightly off topic, but about Bro, we're talking I know, about, I, we're, I understand we're talking exactly about a break here, what but, you mean, dude. I understand. But, <laughs> like, we got, like, players like Assassin coming back. Like, like Bro, he's coming back. I, I know. I don't know if he's doing it this year, but it seems like a yearly process he does this. Like, he came back at the beginning of of uh, Black... I know he came back at the beginning of Black Ops 3, and I came back at the beginning of uh, Advanced Warfare as well. Team with... I think it was him, Moho, John, and Fizzerp at the very beginning. Yeah, for fear, of, right? Of, of AW, yeah. And, 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 oh, and oh my god, they sucked. That's why well, he'll never be a top-tier player, dude. No. Dude, and take and, and, this from me if you're watching this shit. You will not fucking be able to come back if you take any type of break from any game and fucking be where you used to be. Take that from if you're watching, look at me. You will not be able to fucking play at the same level you were. Yep, it took me to an entire up. fucking game, an entire game from last November to fucking right now to like get to the top of that fucking hill. And now I gotta. I still play every fucking day I get. Every day, every morning, even before work. I don't give a fuck if it's bots. I fucking go play. Because now I gotta walk back down that hill so I can just fucking walk down the road now instead of fucking fighting uphill battles and shit, dude. Yeah. That's fucking nuts, though. Pro people getting fucking... Dude, I think that's retarded that like anyone gets fucking fully funding after not playing for a long time and just comes back because yeah. of their name ridiculous it's just play. this game is all named dude all about who you know and your name it's just yeah. that's dumb so dude. stupid it's so stupid dude. like uh actually the other day speaking of, like name before we, we were scrimming and somebody like that we know in am community had dm me talking about, you're not going to get better playing these no-name people 
And I'm like, man, just because these people are not known does not mean they do not have skill. Like, there's so many people that have, like, 100 followers on Twitter or something like that. Yeah, and I'm, just I'm pretty that sure. are dirty. Exactly. Bro, Cloud, <laughs> AX Cloud is yes. the dirtiest AR I've seen in this game. J-Cloud is nice. The yes. dirtiest yeah. AR. And he yeah, has, uh, like, fucking 200 followers. <laughs> I know Ian knows that... Uh... That Thrive team, they're not under Thrive anymore, but they're not they're not really known as much either. They're pretty they good. Really, they're not under they're, Thrive anymore? They're not under Hold they're on, not is under that like Thrive Solar's anymore. team? Or Sor or Sorrow? Yeah, Sor yeah. Sor Bro, that, that, that nigga's nice dirty. They're, yeah, they're they're under, we team scream them every day. We team scream them every day. Like the they're first thing we scream them, bro. They were just we were just losing every game. But now, dude, we're just winning every game, dude. It's I don't know. Yeah, like, but, how long but, have they been a team for? They've been a team for quite a while and I and I know you know they say they're they say they're like they were pros in like Modern Warfare two and Black Ops one in the older games, but I mean they're not really they don't really have that big of a following. And, no, they uh, don't. And you know they're pretty they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I mean we teach them every day. Like that's what I like about them. Like that's I mean they're there they they're always there every day and they they, they play us every day. And that's what I love about that. I love about a team who grinds every single day. That's I respect that. I really do. Oh yeah, I, like dude, fucking somebody who's willing to outwork another person, like, and obviously like anything in life, whether you're talking like Call of Duty, football, basketball, golf, swimming, like if you outwork the other person next to you and you have some natural talent, like you are going to be the best, dude. Like now, th there are people that like just don't. They just don't have the talent, dude. Like, they don't have the natural talent to be an athlete yeah. in whatever they're doing. And no matter how hard they work, they'll never be able to make it to that pro level. But if you fucking... If you're fucking... If people know who you are, and you fucking play, and people are like, yeah, he's good, you obviously have some natural talent. Like, there's never going to be a point where you can be like, those people aren't good enough to play. This is just, like, any team. That's what... Like, college football teams, they play shitter teams for the first two games because they're trying to fucking yeah. fucking hone their skills, get their plays right, run their routes correctly in a real fucking game. So like anyone to I say something rough. like that is just dude, that's so egotistical. And like I guarantee you whoever said that to you is a fucking nobody that plays T48 and just thinks they're the fucking shit. I think mm -hmm. he, I think he plays worse than T48 to be honest. Yeah, it's well, just like <laughs> I mean, because like, people who are good don't say shit like that. Like, if yeah. you talk to yeah, someone like, who's good, he, someone won't say something like that. Damn. Well, see, it. here's here's the thing. If if they're good, but they're annoying and not humble, people will talk about them. They're, they're going to say they're not good because they don't like them a lot. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Jake Cloud, that dude, he's humble and he's nice. He's a nice guy. And that's why people just talk about it because he is good. He is good. That's that's the yeah. truth. And no one like that I've talked to, they, they all like him. So... You know, why would they say anything different? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, dude. It's just fucking... I mean, I'm just really hoping there's so many more opportunities for a lot of players to be able to, like, break out in this next event. Like, how they said that, like, the Season 1 qualifier isn't going to be online this year, that it's going to be a, out of land. Like, I'm really hoping that's yeah. the truth, dude. I really do hope yeah. that's what happens. I think that's what's going on. Because, I, yeah, dude, I and, guarantee and... you on LAN, I guarantee you there's going to be so many different teams in Season 1. Yeah, th anything that's qualifying for anything of that nature, for a league or COD champs, that needs to be on LAN. The yeah, fact yep. that they had an online qualifier for to see who goes to champs is tr ridiculous to me. <laughs> I, mm, there was, I mean, every team that got through it was pretty good. From at least for America, like um, Pristina team with AES. I mean, everybody thought they were online warriors, but you, you mean they come over in Pristina? He had like what was he top seven in KDs in the whole entire event? Yeah, yeah, like, but that's they, actually, did, that's absolutely insane. Did what they get? Did they get DFR? Yeah, but I mean, they, yeah, they it's still it's called it. World, dude. They got DFR and they got like eight thousand dollars. So who cares? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, like like the first round they played on the pool, they they played Rise and they lost by what two rounds in the search? But they just yeah. kept choking. That's why. That's all. They just kept choking because mm. I don't know, I don't know whatever reason. But There's yeah, they almost beat Rise. Nerves. Playing the yeah, biggest oh, definitely. ever definitely. in Call of Duty. I mean, yeah. I don't. Know. We're getting we're going off on a tangent here, but I mean. <laughs> 
but like this isn't even part of the topic, but it's like <laughs> Yeah. I mean, but if you're oh, put in a position you can't let that affect you. You cannot let it affect you. Yeah. But Hell yeah. Regardless. Think... Regardless if um that like most of the teams that were supposed to get through to it did get through. I know that, that bittersweet team with uh Copier, Buck and all them. They they were really upset they lost because they had to play on like horrible internet because they had to play at um like a land center yeah they, they're, yeah and yeah. and they lost they lost to a team they lost to um who is bittersweet are you talking about like Buckshot it was Buck no 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 no, no. it was Buck Hippie Copier Copier and Dito oh, oh, yeah. yeah and and they lost to Yuri which is E.V. Hans. I don't even know. But the, every single one of them players, I th except for one of them, are from Canada. And they have, like, everyone, well, I don't know. According to me, I, I don't believe they play the same on LAN as they do online. And they lost to them, guys. Like, they, they got, they placed T64 at MLG Orlando. Or something like that. And I just, and I just don't think the way they play online... You know, compares to the way they do on land. They placed Part well at like, MLG uh, Anaheim, right? Like top twenty, top top sixteen. What was it? Uh, I think they placed. No, no, actually, no, no. Actually, that was a completely 20, different. Top twenty-eight, top thirty-two. They, they, at Anaheim, yeah, they, they, they actually got like, at Anaheim hard because it was a different team. No, no, no. Anaheim, they did good. Orlando, they did bad. Orlando, no, 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 like, Bittersweet had Tyrant uh, and some other people on that team, and they got DFR. Oh, oh, I think oh, that was yeah, North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, that, that, that was a completely different team. Though. Or South Carolina, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was a different team, just under Bittersweet. Yeah. I'm talking about that Fury team. That Fury team. They did, they did, they did, they, did, they placed top 28, or top 32 at Orlando. As, or no, Anaheim, because I know, I know they placed one higher than us. I did. At, um, and then at... Orlando, MLG Orlando, they play like T sixty four. Boom. And, yeah. All right. Well, we're about to fucking shut this thing down because we've been talking for a hot minute. Time flies when you get fucking a gr good group of guys that fucking have a lot of awesome shit to say. So I hope you guys really enjoyed everything that was said. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for like taking time out of their day to sit here and talk on this podcast and you know say what they have to say. I really hope you guys watching this enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the channel, share this video, let everyone know. Uh, these guys' Twitters are going to be in the description. I'll have their names and then their Twitter ats right next to them. Um, so go ahead and give them a follow. They definitely deserve it just for sitting through this damn thing for an hour late at night. So, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed the topics. And I hope you guys in here, Ian J. Smalls, I hope you guys fucking had a good time sitting here chatting and yes, talking sir. about this shit. So. Indeed. As always, as always. But yeah, thank <laughs> you to you guys for me. I seriously mean it. But um, thank you guys for watching this video. And this concludes the second podcast. It's going to be up. You're going to be watching this and it's going to be Friday morning. Every Friday we'll be uploading a new podcast. Uh, different people, same people. We don't know. You guys are just going to have to wait and find out until next Friday. But thank you guys for watching. And I'm out of here. <laughs>